also have what are called FISMO roles, flexible single master operations roles. These are typically uh, either um, forest based or domain based. For example, the schema master and the domain naming master, there is one per forest. So these are all forest roles. And these down here are all domain roles. You have one RID master per domain. You have one PD simulator per domain. You have one infrastructure master per domain. And that really talks about one of the big advantages of Active Directory versus the old directory service that we had with NT, in that it's multiple master. Multiple master means that if Susan logs on to domain controller 15 in the a.com domain and changes her password, that password change is going to be replicated to all the other domain controllers in that domain. And you don't have to just go to one specific machine to do that. Now, FISMO roles are different in that these are held by just one machine. Typically, by default, they're going to be held by the first domain controller installed in the forest for the forest level FISMO roles, or the first domain controller in the domain for the domain role. So if I'm creating a brand new Active Directory for us, we've never had Active Directory before, I install a new Active Directory domain controller and it says, do you want to create a new forest and a new domain? You say yes. All of these roles are going to be installed on that one machine, every single one of them. If I create a new domain in an existing forest, it's not going to get Schema Master, Domain Naming Master, but it will get RID Master, PD Simulator, Infrastructure Master. Okay, what in the world do these things do? <laughs> Hmm, let's talk about it. First one we have is Schema Master. Schema Master holds the only read-write copy of your Active Directory schema. The schema is, again, those attributes associated with the user objects. And if you extend the schema, like adding employee ID, you have to talk to the Schema Master. That's installed by default on the first domain controller in the first domain in your forest. There's only one. If you want to extend the schema, you have to talk to the Schema Master. At the same time, we also have this domain naming master. The domain naming master verifies that when you're creating a brand new domain in an existing forest, that that domain doesn't already exist. If that goes down, if the domain naming master goes down for whatever reason, you can't add additional domains. But how often do you add additional domains? So if it goes down, eh, it may not be that big a deal until later when you decide to add additional domains. But domain naming master, there's only one for the entire domain, and I recommend go ahead and keep it on the Schema Master because it doesn't take all that much resources. The RID Master is one per domain, and the job of the RID Master is to create what's called a SID, also known as a security ID. What a SID is, is when I create a security principle, whether it is a user account or a machine account, um, we want to be able to assign access permissions for that security principle, that user account or computer account or group account, to be able to go and gain access you know, to a, a printer or to a file server or to a file share. We don't do it based off the username. We don't do it based off the computer name because you can rename user accounts. Let's say that we have Susan and Susan went off to do other things, so we disabled her account and when the replacement came in, we renamed the account and then re-enabled it. Okay, now it says Josie as opposed to Susan. However, the SID didn't change. So all these little access control lists, which are attributes of a file or a folder or a directory or whatever, that says what permissions you have, they're all tagged to the SID so that if I change Susan to Josie, if we did it based on username, I'd have to go to every file in my entire environment and make sure that it says uh, Josie instead of Susan and that wouldn't work very well. But because we assign it based upon the security identifier and if we rename the account, SID hasn't changed, boom, we're good to go. So anything that, ha that is a security principle, a security group, a user account or computer account, is going to have a SID, but we want to make sure that the SIDs are unique. So it always starts off with S, tells you that this is a, a SID, shows you the uh, version number, which is a one, shows you that it's a, a, an authority value of five, then we have a domain value, which is common throughout the entire domain, or if it's on a local machine, we'll have a local machine value. This is randomly generated, and as you can see, it's rather large. Then we have what's called a relative ID. This is what ensures uniqueness between our different objects that we create in Active Directory. So, for example, if I go in and I create uh, two user accounts 
at exactly the same time on two different domain controllers. Maybe I'm on the phone with somebody and uh, we're <laughs> ready, click, and we click and make two user accounts. We don't want them to have the same SID. So what the Ridmaster does is it takes blocks of 500 and it hands these blocks of 500 to each domain controller. So you're going to have 1 to, to 500. You're going to have 501 to, to uh, 1,000. You're going to have 1,001 to 1,500. And that's not quite the exact number that it gives you. But the idea is if I'm creating user accounts, I'm going to use my relative ID pool until I get low, then I'll contact the RID master. They give me another block of 500, and we can just generate RIDs all day, which, or I can generate SIDs all day. If your uh, RID master goes down, what happens is, is that um, initially nothing is going to occur. You'll still be able to create user accounts, and everything still works. But depending upon how many user accounts and security principles you've created in the past, eventually you're going to exhaust it. And on that domain controller, you're not going to be able to create any more user accounts or computer accounts or any other security principle until the RID master comes back online. But that's what its job is, is to ensure that you have unique SIDs on each domain controller and every object should have a unique SID. Uh, we also have what's called a PDC emulator. PDC emulator is kind of going into the Wayback Machine back in the old NT4 days, because back in the old NT4 days, there was only one domain controller called the primary domain controller. That's where PDC comes from. The primary domain controller, and it was the only read-write copy. All the other domain controllers were backup domain controllers. So if the PDC went down, you couldn't change your password, you couldn't create new user accounts because you couldn't talk to the read-write copy. But with Active Directory, all the domain controllers are multiple masters. They all have a read-write copy of Active Directory. But if you have older operating systems like Windows 95 and you don't install the Active Directory client on them, it's just Windows 95 and you join a domain, when they want to change a password, they want to find the, uh, the primary domain controller. Otherwise, they'll refuse to change a password. So, you know, it's good for legacy stuff. But it also has priority for password reset. So if I go, let's say I'm on a machine and my password expires, so I reset my password, and then I log on to another machine that happens to be in a different site or it contacts a different domain controller for the authentication, maybe that first domain controller hasn't replicated my password to the second domain controller and I'll fail login. But my client will automatically try and contact the PDC emulator to verify the password. Now you also notice we have a clock here. When you authenticate against the domain controller, your local machine that's a member of the domain will set its clock with the domain controller. So we have a time sync. And this is important because Active Directory authentication uses a protocol called Kerberos. And one of the functions of Kerberos is extra security in that they don't want somebody to be able to just grab a bunch of packets that are going across the wire and do a replay attack where oh, I'm going to change your password again and again and again. So what happens is, is that when you try and authenticate, if your clock is more than five minutes off, of what the server clock is, it thinks it's a replay attack and it won't let you authenticate. It takes into account time zones, so that's why it's so important that you set your time zone on all your machines. But if my clock says it's 5 after the hour and your clock says it's 25 after the hour, we're not going to let you do that. So you sync your time with the domain controller. Okay, who does the domain controller sync their time with? with the PDC emulator for that particular domain. So your PDC emulator is the master clock for all of your domain controllers in your domain. Then the, the PDC emulator could use like time.microsoft.com or they could use NIST or some other time source. But they set the primary time reference for all the domain controllers in the domain. So the other domain controllers need to have access to the PDC emulator so that they will keep their clock synchronized. Otherwise, eventually, not only will user authentication fail, but also domain controller to domain controller authentication, because they use Kerberos to be able to replicate Active Directory, that's going to fail as well. And now you have an Active Directory environment where it's not going to work. So what if I need to have a um, domain controller that's in an area that doesn't have constant high speed reliable connection. You, you may want to go with a different domain. Heck, you may want to go with a different forest. And that's one of the big reasons why we see multiple domains 
because you don't have that connection between the other domain controllers. Same thing with different forests. You can still set up trust relationships and all that, but if you don't have a reliable connection between the domain controllers, it doesn't have to be you know, super high speed. It just has to be something that I can use now and again. If you don't have that, they're only hooked up via satellite phone or they're completely isolated, then it is going to have to be a different forest. Now the last one we have is kind of a tricky one. This is the infrastructure master. The idea of an infrastructure master is to update group memberships. And when you create a group and you put a user in a group, the infrastructure master is responsible for letting everybody know, hey, you know, we have a user in a group. And if it's in a universal group, that group has to be replicated to a global catalog server. That sounds pretty easy. Here's the problem. And I'm not really sure why Microsoft hasn't solved this. It's been this way forever, and I don't know why I haven't fixed it, but I'm not invited to those meetings anymore. So here's the problem. When you have an infrastructure master that also happens to be a global catalog server, it gets a little confused. The left hand knows what the right hand is doing. So when I update the group, it says, okay, I've updated the group inside the domain, but I haven't updated the global catalog server, but wait a minute, I know about the change. So it doesn't update the global catalog server which means you put somebody in a group on the machine that's the infrastructure master and the global catalog server, your global catalog doesn't get updated, and then your global catalog's out of sync because it doesn't know about group memberships. If you're in a single domain, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't because every domain controller has a copy of every object and every attribute in that domain, so they know that that group membership, that group membership has changed. But if you have a multiple domain environment, in a forest, the global catalog isn't updated. So now if I'm over in z.com and I'm trying to find out the universal group memberships of, we'll say, Bob, for example, I'm not going to know that Bob was put in that universal group, and so it fails. So in a multiple domain environment, you want the infrastructure master to be separate from the global catalog server. You want to have it separate. Otherwise, it is simply not going to work. Um, and again, this, this is uh, only in a multiple domain environment. Single domain environment, it simply doesn't matter.